everybody, Brian Shannon here. Today is Sunday, the 23rd of February, 2014. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, let's take a look at this market here. The S&P 500 for the week was down slightly. The uh, real performer for equities was the Russell 2000. And uh, financials showed a little bit of weakness. Uh, and oil was actually the big winner this week on a percentage basis. So let's take a look at the charts and uh, see what it all means. We obviously remain in a primary uptrend here looking at this weekly chart. And of course, the monthly time frame. We did uh, actually make a new all time high by a penny this week, uh, but had a little bit of trouble there. And again, it jo shows the point that you know you have to ask yourself the questions where does the market come from and where does it have the potential to, to go? Um, this market had rallied about 6.5% off of the intraday lows that we'd seen about 10 days before and made that uh, very short term new high there uh, before backing off. And we had basically a week. Of consolidation for the S&P 500. Now looking at a 65 minute chart again because we have six uh, periods each day that are 65 minutes long that is of equal uh, length versus a 60 minute chart which wouldn't show equal length. We have uh, here what we're looking at as the uh, recent resistance here. So the markets obviously had a little bit of trouble this year uh, getting to positive and staying positive for the S&P 500. We're still down a half of a percentage point um, and this is basically where we started the year out. So um, it looks to me like the key levels are of course uh, we have the resistance up in here at about 184.75 and then uh, what we should see as our bigger level of support in the near term would be down here closer towards 182 really 182 to about 182.15 is what I think we should be viewing as our potential band of support for this week going forward if we're to see some further consolidation in here maybe a little bit of a pullback but if we hold on to the bulk of these gains then I think it's very likely we can continue to move higher however we are uh, starting to see that we're having trouble with this five-day moving average and looking at a 10-minute time frame uh, it, it wouldn't be a bad thing I don't think for this market to pull back a little bit so our first level of uh, potential support we want to monitor is just under 183 if we kind of get down to 183 rally back up and find resistance at the five-day moving average then perhaps we have a little bit uh, deeper pullback to digest these gains however with a primary bull market uh, again it doesn't make sense for uh, longer term shorts to be initiated instead maybe only for more aggressive day trading day trader types uh, the NASDAQ for its part, let's take a look again here. We did see uh, for the week a slight gain here and we've got uh, better performance obviously year to date as well uh, with this market up 2% year to date. Let's take a look at the daily time frame. Of course, we broke some resistance uh, about a week and a half ago. That resistance, uh, you know, the prior high, it wasn't really a lot of resistance. It's more of a level, uh, but that level should now, uh, we would be looking for potential support in that area just at about $89. Uh, the market is holding on to these gains real well and so far is correcting through time. What we would see though, we would get a little bit of concern if we were to break below. 8735 ish. Uh, then maybe, uh, you know, if we were to kind of get down to there, create a lower high, and then see that five day moving average, it would mean that we need to become more defensive and perhaps we'd see a little bit deeper pullback to digest these gains. So, Russell, uh, of course, had a bigger gain this week, and we did get above uh, this important prior uh, level, which was uh, support basically in this area, which then became resistance about a week and a half ago. So, when we look at that on a shorter term time frame you can see that level in here is really uh, 113 uh, and, a, and a half uh, to 114 this has been our, our you know what had been a band of resistance what we'll look for this week is if we see pullback that we want to see that level hold the thing that would concern us is if it got down to there bounced up created the lower high and the five-day moving average was heading lower that would indicate here that maybe this market needs to pull back and correct a little bit further as well by the way thanks for all the great feedback on the uh, CNBC piece that I did last uh, Thursday I'm gonna try to uh, find the link for that and uh, put it with this blog post as well if you hadn't seen it um, the semiconductors had a good week as well uh, per, on a percentage basis the semiconductors were up uh, well they were up just a little bit less than a 
tenth of a percent. So I guess more than anything, we could say that they're holding on to their gains on this uh, after this holiday shortened week. But the fact is, you know, we remain in a primary uptrend, and uh, a lot of people have been trying to, you know, pick the top at a lot of different places in these markets. But the markets continue to defy gravity and uh, skeptics and uh, march higher. So right now, about 43 is our near-term important level that we're going to want to see hold. Uh, if that fails, then I think that 42.50 looks pretty likely uh, as a pullback level that this market has the potential to find support. The, the weaker group, though, is these uh, financials. Now, they're not necessarily something that we have to be really concerned about. Uh, when we look at the daily time frame, we can see we've just got kind of a mess in here. Um, but this prior resistance is holding as support right now at about 2130. So we're going to want to see that hold this week. We have probably really 21 and a quarter to 2130. This is our band of support that we want to see hold. If it fails there, then perhaps we see a little bit deeper pullback. And what we had obviously for resistance this week was what we were concerned about as this prior support had the potential to act as resistance. And now we can look at it and say, in fact, it did hold as resistance. Again, we only know resistance after the fact, but there were obviously sellers in there. It doesn't mean this market's gonna cave in because we have the potential for bigger support in this little band uh, that we just identified, 21 and a quarter to 21.30. That's what we're gonna wanna see hold this week. Uh, so if it does that, then uh, we remain uh, neutral to uh, to positive in the intermediate term. Uh, but breaking below that will give us a little bit more reason for concern that perhaps the market uh, would decline a little bit. By the way, I did talk about uh, Caesars Entertainment on Thursday on uh, uh, CNBC at uh, $23 a share. It was basically right here when I spoke about it. And if you got involved in that trade, you know, it depends on what your personal time frame is. If you're a swing trader, I'd suggest maybe you raise your stop to $22.95 to assure you don't get stopped out. If you're something a little bit longer term, maybe you give it down to about $22.45. It's all up to you to decide. I, as I always say, I don't try to tell anyone what to do. I want to bring low risk, high probability trades to your attention and give you suggestions and then give you the opportunity to make that trade your own. That's what I talk about each and every week on Alpha Trends at the subscription service where we talk about uh, individual stocks each day and uh, trying to help you identify what your personal parameters are and how to uh, see what suits you best. So thanks for tuning in and uh, I will talk to you next week.